Coming up on Nancy Meets, an exclusive interview with Ify Alexis Sosai, the founder and director of Love Limitless. What are your thoughts about that? I think I have two thoughts on it. The first one is, with someone that's just coming into like a Christian setting in a Christian environment, I feel like the way they dress should be one of the last things that is even spoken about. We discuss all things about the sisterhood, as well as the very personal and real effects that creating a ministry has had on Ify. But we also had time to talk about some very big and very hot topics, and Ify certainly does not hold back. And they think that these cheap fixes of throwing a shawl over you yeah. or telling you how you should dress will fix the problem but that doesn't fix the eternal problem it just fixes the problem in the moment. It was a great time spent with an even greater woman of God and it's all coming up right now as Nancy Meets begins. And a very warm welcome to this debut episode of Nancy Meets. I'm Nancy Mills and it is so good to be with you at long last. Every Sunday night for the next five weeks, I'll be talking to five extraordinary individuals, all of whom are making waves with the purpose and talent that God has placed in their hands. And in many respects, they are the Daniels and Esthers of this very time. Individuals who have heard the voice of God and whose very obedience has produced some impressive and astronomical results. And over the course of the season, you'll find that whilst I'm interested in celebrating their successes, I also want to learn of their journey, of faith, of failures, and of their opinions on issues affecting us all. And we start that mission tonight with our very first guest, Ify Alexis Osai. At just 24 years old, Ify Alexis is the embodiment of a phenomenal woman. Not only is she a minister at her local London church, she's also the visionary and leader behind the sisterhood Love Limitless. Known to so many for its focus on teaching, conversation and mentorship, all done in the effort to help young women flourish to be their best self in Christ. If that wasn't enough, she is also a graduate of Queen Mary University of London, a Bachelor of Engineering to be precise, and a recipient of numerous awards and distinctions, all of which prove the point that God is doing amazing things in Ify's life. But how did her path lead her here? I met up with Ify a couple of weeks ago at London's The Hoxton to find out that answer and many others. So being the founder of Love Limitless and knowing that you're the founder, it's your movement. Um, why do you think in this time, like being a woman, being a Christian woman, why do you think that it's women that you were called to lead and to teach? Mm. I feel like the immediate answer would be because I'm a woman. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Apart from the obvious, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think also one of the things that, you know, obviously Titus speaks about women teaching younger women, mm. but... One of, the things, one of the things I'm really passionate about is women. And I think it's because in society, we've always had it mixed up. You know, yeah. it's either the women were being suppressed or women now thinking they're men. But I just really believe that God's standard of femininity and God's standard of biblical womanhood is something that can sometimes be far removed. Yeah. So one thing I'm really passionate about is restoring what it means to be a real woman in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So in this season and in this time, um, why do you think it's become so urgent and so necessary to teach what biblical womanhood is and what it looks like? I think it's really urgent right now because there's so many attacks on our identity. Mm -hmm. There's so many attacks on the woman, even the man. Um, one thing that we teach is that biblical womanhood is not about how good you can cook. Yeah. It's not about the length of your skirt. But biblical womanhood is when a woman finds her identity in Christ Jesus and mm -hmm. displays that to the world. Mm -hmm. So more than ever, we really need God's women to really stand up and embody the standard of Christ Jesus, especially in a world that is decaying. Yeah. Um, and with the social, the moral decay, Decline of society, we need women that will stand up and uphold the standard of Christ Jesus. So how do you know that it was you that were called to do it and be the person at the forefront of your own movement? And what was the calling like for you? I remember in my second year, I think it was my second year, in my first year of uni, going into my second year of university, I was mm -hmm. like, God, like, I don't feel like I'm in my purpose. Mm -hmm. I was having one of those real breakdown moments. And I was like, you need to tell me what you want me to do. Um, and it was something that came and it was, it was just like a, I know that I'm called to women. I've always mm -hmm. been passionate about instructing, training, discipling, mentoring young women and just seeing young women find their worth established in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, 
in terms of why me I just believe that God has given me that mandate he's equipped me yeah. um, and he's kind of set me apart to do that to not just teach people what to do but be an example of it as well yeah okay so Love Limitless is almost five years now um, so that's that's a long time yeah. um, did you think when it started that five years down the line you would still be here and do you think that it would have been as big as it is now so over the course of the five years you've added things along the way does it look like what you imagined at the beginning um I think God has just been blowing my mind um I didn't think that I could be a visionary I didn't think that I had like the capacity to just kind of think of new things and throw yeah. it into the mix so no I didn't see it being where it is now I think for me I was happy if we had our conferences and a once few ladies came just, once yeah. a year <laughs> and people came and they enjoyed themselves yeah. and it was like, okay, yeah, biblical womanhood, we love Christ and that was it. But yeah. just in journeying with Christ Jesus, I found out so much, you know, learning that my true ministry occurs in the one-to-ones that I have with God. Mm. Um, the one-to-ones that I have with young women yeah. um, and the training that can take place. So I've learned so much. I didn't imagine it. Yeah. I didn't think that I would be where I am even spiritually in my worldview and just mm. the way God has kind of molded me and put yeah. me together. I didn't, I, I couldn't have imagined yeah. it. So I understand that you're a minister as well. Um, you don't actually talk about that much. Um, it was for me like freeing and prying um, that I actually found out. So um, in a sense, would you say that you keep that life separate then not at all i do so much with my church mm -hmm. um and my church is it's not your typical church so it's okay. like a ministry of ministries so there's so many different things that i'm involved in mm -hmm. and i'm involved with that is impacting and affecting the community from working with young people which yeah. i also do so yeah being a minister as well so yeah. i like to kind of bring it all together tie okay. it in what I learn with my pastor, what I learn at church is ultimately mm. what feeds into Love Limitless and everything else that I do. That's good, that's yeah. good. I guess you just input it, you know, when it in comes to Love Limitless, yeah. that's good. So another thing I want to talk about is transparency. As a minister, as a founder of Love Limitless, um, a lot of people obviously come and share their testimonies. I know at your conferences, you do have a lot of speakers that share their testimonies. And I'm assuming that, you know, with weekly workshops and your meetings, your own mentoring sessions, it's something that you actually have to do yourself. Um, would you say then that it's important to be transparent or are there any parts of you or anything that you just don't want to talk about because that's for you? Or, on the other hand, do you think it's just important to be as open and as free as possible as a minister? I think it requires a lot of wisdom. Mm. When I first mm. started out, I was the closed off person. Yeah. I mean, I could preach the word of God, yeah. <laughs> but not necessarily my personal experiences yeah. or my personal mm. life. So for me, it was a journey of, okay, I haven't been through some of the stuff that I've been through just to kind of be silent about yeah. it, mm. but to share it. So one of the things that I do is I share as much as will help the person. So okay. that's what really governs me. If I know that I've got an experience in my own life that will really, really strengthen and help that person, then mm. I'm going to be honest and transparent about it. If it's not going to help that person, then for the sake of transparency, I'm not just going to, yeah. you know. But I like to share what will help. And there's nothing in my life that is off limits from God to use. Mm. And that's something that I said to him. If there's anything I've been through, anything that I've done, God, and you want to use it, then yeah. use it. And I will encourage whoever, whenever, however. Yeah. Um, and it's just about wisdom to do so. Yeah. So do you think it would be difficult then? So say there's a thing that um, you have that God wants you to share on and you don't want to because it's it's close it's close to you and god is like no i want you to use this thing because i know what to share with someone because i know what they're going through and i've chosen you you're the person that needs to share your story with them um how how difficult or how difficult do you think it would be to be obedient to that sound and what does the process look like for you Sometimes I've had experiences like mm -hmm. that as well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's kind of like, God, but I really don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to do Like, can you, can I not just share what the word of God says, says about it? Yeah. You, know, you know, you can be very political and yeah. <laughs> the Holy Spirit knows what the Holy Spirit said. So I found it hard. I found mm -hmm. it challenging, especially for those areas of my life that might be a bit more... I'm still being healed from or the yeah. Lord is still working in me but 
I've always found it to be rewarding. So in those times when I've obeyed the leading of God to just kind of share, mm -hmm. it has always been rewarding in the life of that person. And you see that they're like, wow, you've been through that as well. Like, mm -hmm. I'm also going through that. Like, thank you. Yeah. So for me, I think I'm able to put aside my own comfortability mm -hmm. to really see that person kind of come into healing and wholeness. Yeah. How did you know that with these people that you do have on your team now, it was like, yes, these are the people that God said I'm going to walk down this road with. Like, how did you actually know? That's a very good question. I think for myself, we had people that, I did mention we had an open day, yeah. which was really good because it was like sharing the vision of Love Limitless. And I'm very strict on, you're not here to help me, you're mm -hmm. here to serve God's vision. Um, and I always say that Love Limitless is not the ministry of Ify, Alexis, or Sai. It is God's ministry that I happen to be stewarding um, alongside other people. So I kind of take away the ownership just mm. on from me and show that it's ultimately God. So it's about people finding their own vision within the vision that God has set. Yeah. So in terms of a team, we had people that were like, oh, you know, I want to be a part. And sometimes you're able to discern that motives aren't mm. correct. And yeah. It's just like... Maybe not this time. Not <laughs> but time. Yeah, yeah, maybe next time. But for a lot of people, they were just kind of like, if we, we love what you're doing, yeah. I want to be a part of it. And the beautiful thing about young women's ministries is that a lot of women feel called to women. Yeah. A lot of women are like, they have a heart for that. So it's it's easier to find people to be on your team yeah. um, that are willing to serve the vision that God has. Yeah. So in regards to the vision, I know a lot of the vision comes from behind you know, how the name is formed. So, Love Limitless. Why Love Limitless and how did the name come about? I think for myself, one of the one of the things that was quite difficult for me to grasp when I came to Christ Jesus was his love. Mm -hmm. It was like, so wait, you mean that I don't have to do anything to earn your love? Like, yeah. are you sure? Like, yeah. I don't have to be good. And I grew up in the kind of household where you do certain things and you have certain results. It's like, yeah. I'm good, so yeah. I get pocket money or I do this, so I get this. So, to kind of realize that God's love is so unmerited, it was, mm. it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And then I was reading Romans 8 that speaks about there's no height, there's no width, there's no depth that can separate you from the love of God. Yeah. Um, and I just believe that it was a name that God gave me. I'm not necessarily the best with names and yeah. coined things that are really, <laughs> yeah. really cute, but when yeah. it, I felt like it dropped in my spirit. And I was just yeah. like, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Funny you say that because it's a good name. The branding is nice. The logo, the colours, it's clean, it's seamless. It is actually really beautiful and it looks like what we would perceive biblical, woman to act, biblical womanhood to actually look like. Um, I mean, even down to the logo, some people might think that it's, it's not big enough of a thing to go to God about. But I mean, this is, this, it may be minimal, but it's something that you can consult God um, in when choosing the logo so at the beginning did you actually get any help and you know has your branding and your logo has it actually evolved over time so i think just in terms of branding i'm naturally like a girl's girl like i'm a girly girl yeah. so i love pink so for me when we first started branding love limitless it was pretty much oh all the stuff that if you like yeah. especially <laughs> because i was the only person but as we've kind of grown with a team mm. um and certain design tasks are kind of kind of being taken off my, my hands yeah. um, I've just kind of seen how the brand has kind of evolved it yeah. is your typical everyday girl mm -hmm. kind of kind of cutesy yeah. kind of flowers, and I really like pink. it flowers yeah. pink brains and beauty <laughs> yeah. it's very kind of like that and I think it's good because when people think about hearts, when they think about pink, whenever they think about love, I want mm. them to think about love limitless being every young woman's tool. So, yeah. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah. So you talked about, you know, relinquishing your tasks to other people. Um, how has that been? I know it's your baby, it's yours. You know, you want to do the stuff yourself, but you've started to delegate. Yeah. Has it been difficult? <laughs> A little bit. I think my team would be like, yes, it's yeah. been difficult. <laughs> I think... Yeah, it's, it's been a journey. It's really been a journey. And I'm not necessarily the most forthcoming person. Like, all right, team, need you all need... Yeah, I'm yeah. not that kind of person. So um, I've really had to learn, and I'm still learning how to delegate, how yeah. to, yeah, just really let go and know mm -hmm. that it might not be the way I would do it, but that yeah. doesn't make it lesser. And I okay. found people on the team that have strengths in areas that I have weaknesses, and mm -hmm. they're able to do some stuff. And I'm like, that's better than anything I could have done. done. So... Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's been good. Mm. It's been good. It's good. Okay. Um, there are a lot of other platforms like your own, so online blogs, podcasts, um, just, yeah, very similar to your own. Um, do you think the market or the field is, is saturated at all? Do you think there's 
too much. There's too much for us. Yeah. Um, do I think that there's too much? I don't think there's too much. Okay. Um, I think. No, I don't think. I think there's a lot that reaches out to different audiences in different markets. Yeah. Um. There are a lot of upcoming like young women's ministries, and for mm. the most of them, I'm really happy to see people you know passionate for God that want to yeah. share, um, where God would have them at present. I think some of the things that I always say is when it comes to any kind of form of ministry that you're reaching out to people, just know that it doesn't define you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's probably some of the, the issues that I face with people that want to get into ministry for a sense of validation. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't define you. That's one of the things mm -hmm. I've learned with Love Limitless, that I define it, you know, we define it, but mm -hmm. it doesn't define me. Yeah. I think with the rise of all of these different platforms, I think people just have to be true to the call of God and not try and mimic copy mm. anything else but what's really on the inside of them and I say that it's not saturated because the way the Holy Spirit works through me is different to the way he works through you and yeah. everybody else so even if we have similar or identical branding in terms mm. of a ministry but the ministry of our actual lives will always be different the way you're able to put yeah. together certain things will be different to the way I am so I think there's a lot that's out there which is good because mm -hmm. it means that no one is without excuse mm. um, we all have to kind of get, get, get together and Jesus. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, there is a lot. Um, maybe, okay, fine, not saturated, um, but in comparison to guys, <laughs> yeah, there isn't much. I, 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 I don't know. Why is that? Um, I mean, sometimes I feel like it's possibly a reflection of their attendance in church or, you know, their active engagement at church. There just isn't much going on for them. Like, yeah, why do you think that is? And does it actually ever bother you at all? I think at one point it did bother me because mm. I was like, oh my God, like we got to have all these godly women yeah. where their husband's at, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that's, that's how I felt. And then I think one of the things that I'm sure of is that there are godly men out there that are raising other godly men. They might not be doing it in the way that women do it. We're very glamorous. Yeah. So we have the conferences and the flyers and the logos yes. and the branding. Yeah. And we like things to be cute. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But that doesn't mean that guys aren't there doing similar things. It might not just be packaged the way that we do it and I have mm -hmm. met guys that are very passionate about the discipleship of other guys mm -hmm. and making sure that that's happening as well so I think there's one side of it where it might not be as in your face or as flashy as the way we do it mm -hmm. um, but I do believe that it's being done by yeah, other men yeah. yeah okay so Love Limitless has been growing for five years we can see you know how much is growing the fruits it's bearing um, and we can see the hand of your work and how much you have worked so hard um, do you think that's been of any detriment to your own personal growth um, and you know watching we're, we're seeing Love Limitless grow but we, how, how about you um, how's that been and how do you put the two together that's a good question girl <laughs> um, my own personal growth I wouldn't say so I think Literally, I feel like the more I get pushed out to minister, the mm -hmm. more I value my secret place, the more I value my ministry onto God. Yeah. I realise I actually can't do it without God. Yeah. You know, And there's been times when I've tried and I'm like, oh, I don't need to pray, you know, I can just go and do whatever. And it's just, it was a shambles. Yeah. So <laughs> I know that if I need to minister to people, I need to make sure I'm first ministering to God. Mm -hmm. And for me, that balance needs to be correct. He needs to be everything. And yeah. just stay poor, stay needy before him. Mm. Um, so it hasn't. I think that actually having this outlet, this responsibility has actually pushed me to grow because I know that my growth actually affects the growth of other people. Mm. My destiny is actually linked to the destinies of other people. If I'm not doing what I need to be doing, if I'm not in the right position, if I'm not growing, then what about the people that I'm responsible for? So it's yeah. been a great thing that's pushed me. Does it get tiring having to be this person for other people? And do you actually have people that are, you know, that person for you? Um, does it get tiring not being it for other people? Because I don't believe that I'm this person for other people. I'm mm. first that person for God because that's what God requires of me. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't get tiring in that sense. Mm. Knowing that there's people looking at me, I think it's a pressure, but it's a good kind of pressure. It's the kind of pressure that causes you to keep running. I feel like if I had no eyes on me, I'd probably just be like, okay, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just going to do whatever I want. But I know that, okay, God has kind of set me as an example and as a role model. And I do have role models mm. around me, people that are at my peer level, but also mentors that I'm like, 
I love the way you're so mature in the spirit. I love the way you speak. I love the fact that you're not easily angered. I want to be like you. So mm. there's different role models that I have around me that lets me know no matter how far I've come, there's still further to go. Um, how do you find relaying your vision and your purpose? Um, obviously, you, it came to you first. You were on your own and God said, you know, this is what I want you to do. Um, obviously, your team weren't around. Um, when you finally worked out who your team would be, um, how did you actually find relaying the question, the vision and the purpose to them? I think I don't... I don't even think I understood the vision straight away. So it's something that is progressive. And as we continue to have conversations, I think everyone kind of gets it. So yeah. I make sure at our team meetings, we're always talking about what the vision of Love Limits is and why we do what we do. So it's consistently being drummed into people's minds. I'm always reminded of Habakkuk that says, write the vision and make it plain mm -hmm. that someone else can read it and run with it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have the vision, but it's not plain enough for someone else to read it and run with it so yeah. I'm like however I can simplify it so anyone can understand it you know this these are, this is the the basis of what we do this is the basics if I can do that then it makes it easier for people to read it and run with it and kind of catch the zeal in the fire yeah. okay so you're a young woman mm -hmm. you run Love Limitless mm -hmm. there are a lot of other young women that are doing exactly the same thing as you I I'm sure you know like four or five there's a lot of us. Yeah, a lot more. Exactly, exactly. Um, there's a lot of you um, doing this. And I, yeah, I, are you guys all cool? Is it like a circle? Are you guys all friends? Like, I'm assuming, like, so when it comes to events and stuff, you'll bump into each other. And, you know, I can't guarantee that you guys all get along. I'm not saying that it's like some sort of love and hip-hop TV show where not everyone gets along. But I'm assuming that not everyone sees eye to eye. Is that okay to talk about? Yeah. I think if we can all agree that we're believers, mm -hmm. then if there's an issue, then mm -hmm. we can talk about it. And I love the kind of people that, especially the ones that are more mature in ministry, you might post something that I don't doctrinally agree with, that I don't agree with in terms of the scripture. Mm -hmm. And it's our duty as believers to pull each other up on that. Like, sis, I don't think that the way you wrote this was right. Or yeah. you said this, but I think you could have said it this way. And that kind of transparency is so necessary. And it saved a lot of us. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not everything that I've said that, or things that I said a few years ago that I probably would say now because I've grown in knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I think it's always good to have other sisters in ministry that will pull you up about certain things and encourage you about certain yeah. Yeah. things so there are there are a lot of us there's yeah. more than four in fact there's, <laughs> yeah. there's loads of us and i yeah. make it um an actual thing to get to know young women that are in ministry and find out oh so what is it that you do okay. um and my first thing is is your message sound is your message biblical is what you're saying is it correct yeah and then secondly are you actually living your message yeah. do you know what i mean so i like to get to know other young women that are in ministry and kind of encourage them push them and see how i can support as well so when you speak to other young women, obviously, you know, you're trying to find out who they are, what they're doing, you know, why they're doing it. Um, I, I'd like to believe that obviously it's just out of genuine care. You genuinely want to know them and genuine, genuinely want to know what their ministry is about. Um, it does kind of sound like, you know, when someone goes into like someone's kitchen, mm -hmm. sees them cooking, tries to find out what ingredients they put inside and, you know, you want to leave, take it away and kind of make yours better. Does that happen? I mean, it, it might happen subconsciously. You might not notice that you're doing, but yeah, have you found that that happens at all? I'm not, I haven't seen that, not with my own two eyes. <laughs> I don't doubt in the kind of world we live in, there might be instances of that, but not for myself and I think one of the reasons that I want to know is that God doesn't play with his young people mm -hmm. he doesn't play with his young women I know that much so mm -hmm. if there's someone else that has is taking up the responsibility of training people then yeah. as a believer it's actually my duty to make sure that they're not leading people astray mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and it's to put your place to put yourself in a position of being a leader over someone as a fellow leader, I need to check, like, yeah. are we on okay. the same place? And if we yeah. are, then praise God, hallelujah, let's, we're not, do you know what I mean? We and if we're not, then let's yeah. assess this yeah. as well. And it's all in love. It's not in competitiveness or anything like that, but it's all in love. And one of the things I always tell other young women that are in ministry is that mm. you are not, your ministry doesn't define you in a sense of, 
your identity is not tied in what you do, it's tied in who you are. Yeah. And we can often feel discouraged by other people's successes when we see ourselves as our ministry. If I saw myself as Love Limitless, that means whenever another ministry popped up, I would feel inferior mm -hmm. or I'd feel superior or whatever. But yeah. I find that the ministry doesn't define me. Mm -hmm. It's not who I am. The ministry is God's vision and he will grow it. Yeah. He will change it, mold it as he sees fit. So as other ministries kind of come, for me, it's exciting to see how yeah. God is showcasing himself in other people. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no kind of competition yeah. in that at all. Yeah. Yeah. And still to come on Nancy Meets. Personally, mm -hmm. I don't believe anyone was in the right yeah. to the people that were screaming and hooping and hollering <laughs> and everything. Actually, One of the big ideas that Love Limitless Sisterhood seeks to promote is the understanding of godly beauty. But what does it mean to be beautiful in God? I asked if he just that and this is what she had to say. But the kind of beauty that I believe the most in is what First Peter 3 speaks about, which yeah. says, you know, let your beauty be inward. Welcome back to Nancy Meets. I'm Nancy Mills, and let's continue with our conversation with Ify Alexis Osai. Um, yeah, one thing I've noticed about Love Limitless is that, you know, imagine I didn't know you and we took you out of Love Limitless. I do know it's on its own. Um, however, there are other ministers where they're the face of everything. Their name is a ministry name. You know, they're like the placard, um, it's in those cases where it makes me question, like, what are your motives, you know? And I also say, especially to the team, that I might be the steward of it right now, mm -hmm. but I don't know what the Lord has planned for the next few years, the next few months, and yeah. I don't see myself as iffy, the minister, or Love Limitless is the ministry of Love... Um, that Love Limitless is the ministry of Ify Alexis. Also, yeah. I don't see that at all when, you know, when I see Love Limitless. So the Lord might say tomorrow, Ify, you've served your time as the leader of Love Limitless, That's but I've chosen someone on. else yeah. to pass it on to you. And I'd be like, okay, thank you, Lord, because I haven't found my identity in it. And I know that he knows best. So, so Brains and Beauty is your annual conference. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, where did that stem from? And how did it come about? So Brains and Beauty, um, it's... It's a term that I kind of put together, because remember in the world, if you'd ask a guy, like, oh, what's your total package? What do you look for in a woman? It was always, oh, she has to have brains and beauty. It was mm -hmm. that, you know, you can't just be beautiful, you also have to be smart and vice versa. So one of the things that we felt was, oh, let's redefine what that total package woman looks like. You know, if the total package is quote unquote brains and beauty, then let's show people that if you're going to be beautiful, let it be from the gentle and quiet spirit that you have. Mm -hmm. Let it be something that exudes from the inside out. And if you're going to have, if you're going to be brainy or smart, let it be the excellent spirit that you have in Christ Jesus. Let it be the diligence that you apply to your work because you're working all things as unto the Lord. Yeah. So being beautiful as a Christian woman, being beautiful, what does, it, what does beauty mean to you and how do you display it yourself? Yeah, one of the things that I believe is just taking the emphasis off the external. I believe that naturally we are all beautiful, we're all wonderfully and fearfully made, as in God's workmanship, his, our physicalities, yeah. he's made all things good. Mm -hmm. But the kind of beauty that I believe the most in is what First Peter 3 speaks about, which yeah. says, you know, let your beauty be inward. So for me, beauty is someone that has the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. someone that is embodying the fruit of the Spirit. Sometimes I'm just like, beauty is patience, love, joy, peace, yeah, yeah. goodness, all kindness, the good stuff. all yeah. of that, like, how well you're able to subdue the flesh, how able you're, how how well you're able to walk in the spirit, how yeah. patient you are, how nice and loving you are, all of those things exude from the inside out, and that yeah. for me is the most beautiful. Yeah. You meet someone that is like so gentle, so loving, so caring, and knows God, and it's just like, wow, you actually are a beautiful person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is. I'm not gonna say that I don't agree with everything that you said. It is important, and I wholeheartedly believe that um, as well. But you know, like. I mean, me as an example, there are days when I'm just not having a great day. But the moment that my hair is done, my makeup is done, you know, I genuinely just feel so much better. Now, there are some churches or maybe some bodies that might believe that um, our physical being isn't, it's just not important. They, they basically say, just forget that stuff. Don't spend money on clothes. Don't spend money on shoes. You know, that's all taken care of. Obviously, take care of what's inside. Now, obviously, I do believe that you know, as Christian women, whatever we do have inside ourselves, we should just let it emanate. Um, but yeah, there are people that just don't agree with it and can kind of like lean the whole other side. Do you think there's a bit of an imbalance in the emphasis at all? 
I yeah. think the importance of inner beauty is still one part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says, do not be concerned. It doesn't say, do not care. Mm -hmm. Like, do yeah. not be overly concerned with the way you look. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't care yeah. or dress in a way that brings glory to God. And mm -hmm. actually taking care in the way you look, you yeah. know. Sometimes I think, when I think about modesty, I always think about what's appropriate. So mm -hmm. whether you're overly dressed or underdressed, yeah. sometimes that can really draw attention away from the message that you're bringing and kind of draw it to the way you look. look. Okay. So I think it's good to always look good, like dress up well. You don't yeah. have to overdo it necessarily. Yeah. But I've noticed that some people are naturally, their creativity comes through in the way they dress really and they are, yeah. they are about that life. And I think as long as it's done with a heart that is right mm -hmm. and a heart that's not just like, look at me, I'm the best. Yeah. <laughs> then I think that that can be okay. Okay. So, so there's modesty as a topic on its own. Um, and there's a statement that I do want to talk about, which is um, dress the way that you want to be addressed. Now, for a very long time, I found this statement rather problematic. Reason being that I believe that someone should be addressed in, with respect and with decency simply because they're a human being and not because of the way they're dressed or not dressed. Um, for someone that champions modesty and shining God's light in the way you appear and dress yourself, what does that statement mean to you? I think I understand where the person was going with it in mm -hmm. the sense of if you want to be addressed as someone that is has something to offer then look that way but you're right I think it can be easily misconstrued and mm -hmm. whether someone dresses in no clothes they still have worth and they should still be ascribed that worth so they should still be addressed in a way that is worthy yeah. so I, I do agree with you. Yeah. So modesty in your own definition what, what does it actually mean for you? I feel like the term modesty has just been like battered and bruised yeah. in Christian mm -hmm. circles. <laughs> I feel like most people roll their eyes when they think about modesty, yeah. but I love it because I believe that it represents God's heart. Mm -hmm. And for me, modesty will always start with a heart that is submitted to God. Before your dress code or the way you dress, you can wear skirts down to your ankle and cover up completely and still be immodest because of the heart behind it. So for me, mm -hmm. I see modesty first as a heart position that says, I want to glorify God mm -hmm. and not myself. Mm -hmm. um, and as believers that are in that place and are submitted to God, I believe it naturally flows through the way yeah. you dress. Yeah. Now that's not to say that every believer is going to dress in a way that glorifies God, quote unquote, but you know, everyone's at different stages in, in their, their walk, walk with God. Exactly. Um, but modesty for me, it's first a heart that's submitted to God and then a heart that seeks to draw attention to God before they draw it to themselves and yeah. how they look and, yeah. you know, look at me with whatever. Yeah. So in a sense then, would you say that everybody's definition of modesty is reflective of, you know, where their heart is at this time? So when you get people that come into church, let's say, um, dressed a certain way based on this definition because they're not at the greatest place, and then you have people tell them that don't look like that. This is right. This is not. This isn't right. Sorry. And this is what you shouldn't be wearing. Um, because of that, if it is reflective, you know, of where their heart is, is it right for us to judge and say that no, this is not what you should be wearing, and this is what modesty looks like, and this is what our blueprint is, and in order to be modest, you need to look like this as well. Yeah. What are your thoughts about that? I think I have two thoughts on it. The first mm -hmm. one is with someone that's just coming into like a Christian setting in a Christian environment, I feel like the way they dress should be one of the last things that is even spoken about. Basically. Do you know what I mean? If they're yeah. still trying to figure out their worth in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus, then go for that. Show them their value. The truth is a lot of people don't do that or they yeah. don't actually spend time letting people know that, oh, you're actually worth something. You are actually a princess. Like God paid the price for you. A lot of people don't do that and they think that these cheap fixes of throwing a shawl over you yeah. or telling you how you should dress will fix the problem but that doesn't fix the eternal problem it just fixes the problem in the moment yeah. and then my second thing is that I've actually had young women come to me and they're like if you, I want to please God in my dressing but I don't know how to dress mm. and I think that that's also a sign because I don't want to swing the pendulum in a way that it's like okay yeah. let's not ever talk about dressing but you can actually show people ways to dress and there's so many different amazing ministries like that that mm. actually show people okay you want to honor God in the way you dress and hear ways to do it you know have you yeah. considered when you walk you know how high does your skirt rise and all of those kind of practical tips that are actually necessary do you know mm -hmm. what I mean so I don't want to negate them completely but it always starts with a heart that okay. is submitted to God so yeah if a young lady came to you and said to you that yeah if I do actually want to learn how to please God in the way I dress and the way that I appear um how would you sit them down and yeah what does the iffy like outfit look like to you 
Oh, that's mm-hmm. a good question. I've never had someone come <laughs> I'll send them yeah. to some people that I know. <laughs> yeah. What does that outfit look like? I think something that doesn't strip them of their individuality, something mm. that doesn't make them... Sometimes we think about church Christian women, it's the A-line skirt, yeah. it's the full cover-up. Yeah. <laughs> we have these weird perceptions of what modesty, look, what modesty looks, looks like. like, but if their heart is in the right place, then we're going to be assessing, okay, why do you wear the things that you do? Mm-hmm. Um, there's certain parts of a woman's body that I personally believe should just be covered. Just, be, you know, just you know, just, just like, it don't need to be, we don't need to see, we don't need to yeah. see all of that. Mm-hmm. So I would kind of like hit at those kind of areas and, you know, just kind of see what that looks like. But yeah. I won't say, okay, you need to do X, Y, Z in order yeah. to be modest, because that's not true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the reason why I asked this question is that um, some time back we had a clip that went viral on Twitter, mm-hmm. which was a sit-down interview um, with Megan Good and oh, yeah. Devon Franklin, mm-hmm. which is our husband. And um, yeah, we had um, a lovely lady. You gonna um, cover she, up? You gonna cover? You gonna cover up? Yes. <laughs> and you, you know, you're gonna cover your, your chest and every. And I just thought, yeah, I've heard this so many times before, and I'm I'm genuinely tired and. I just, if Megan Good is happy with where she is, you know, she says she's saved, she's yeah. going to wear what she's going to wear. Yeah. That's, that's the bottom line. Wear, wear, and wear. she's going to wear on the walkway um, and she's going to be happy with that. Is it really up to us, you know, to be judging that at all? You know, some people will say that they understand where the lady was coming from. Some people will disagree with the way that she did it. But yeah, is it down to us? Should we be policing what anybody is wearing at any time at all? Actually, from that clip, personally, mm-hmm. I don't believe anyone was in the right yeah. to the people that were screaming and hooping and hollering <laughs> in the green. I actually genuinely don't believe yeah. anyone was in the right. I felt like the woman that raised the concern, I feel like it was a genuine question. Mm-hmm. Her the, her delivery and everything, it was a she bit much. She said that God told her to come what? and say it. I didn't hear yeah. that. Um, <laughs> I don't know about that, but... I, I do understand her concern because yeah. I have seen certain outfits and I'm like, but then mm. personally, I don't know where Megan Good is. At. I don't believe that yeah. her outfits are like, mm-hmm. but I've noticed that there's been a change, but yeah. I don't know where she's mm-hmm. at spiritually or what the Lord is dealing with her in mm-hmm. her life at presently. But I trust that if it's God that really saved you, yeah. then the way you used to dress yeah. with time, <laughs> we're going to get, you know, and even yeah. being saved for the amount of years that I've been saved, there's certain things that I would have worn three years ago that I don't wear today. And yeah. that's purely because mm-hmm. I've increased in revelation of what pleases God. Mm-hmm. Um, so I believe that even as she's walking with God, it's good that people can kind of point out and, you know, that woman felt yeah. led. But I genuinely believe that if she is safe for real, that yeah. the Holy Spirit will also be working on her uh-huh. heart to get mm-hmm. to that place. So yeah. that whole clip was a little bit... It was, it was quite funny, to it, be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think yeah. anyone was in the right... The response is no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Megan Good, yeah, she's married to a minister. Um, so I want to talk to you about, you know, women um, in the church and what you believe their roles and their places and what they should be. Um, I remember you, I listened to a podcast um, that you released a couple of months ago um, on singleness and purposeful singleness, purposeful singleness, which was amazing, by the way. I think you were speaking at an event. Um, and one thing you did highlight and talk about was, you know, using your singleness as a time to get closer to God, um, to fill your space and time with nurturing your character, nurturing your spirit and, you know, being about God's work. Um, I think a lot of our singleness is occupied by the church. I know that that's the case for myself. I fill up a lot of my time with church and ministry and stuff. Um, So, yeah, in regards to biblical womanhood, what exactly does it look like for you? For me, especially because you mentioned the Mm -hmm. the singleness element of it, the Bible talks about the single woman is more concerned about the things of the Lord. And for me, as someone that is single, I'm really passionate about that. Mm -hmm. We often say marriage is ministry, which it is, but Mm -hmm. singleness is also a ministry, and I feel like a a lot of women negate the ministry of singleness to clutch and grab yeah. hold of the ministry of marriage yeah. but if the single woman is more concerned about the things of the Lord then what are we doing with our singleness yeah the Bible says one can chase a thousand to ten thousand but some of us aren't even doing our one thousand yet you know <laughs> yeah. we're even serving God to capacity yet yeah. so um that's kind of my thoughts on singleness and as with biblical womanhood I don't try to put titles or you know this is what you have to do as i said earlier like it's not about the length of your skirt it's not about how good you can cook Mm -hmm. that doesn't define you as a woman what first and foremost defines you as a woman is the fact that you've been made a woman Mm -hmm. you have the chromosomes of a woman woman. just because no matter (laughs) you can change you can do whatever you want externally but if you've got x y if you've got x x chromosomes you're a woman (laughs) um so you are first a woman and then the biblical part of it is really allowing the life of christ to come 
out in what you do the bible talks about we've been crucified with christ it's no longer us who lives but christ that lives in us Mm -hmm. so for me when i think about biblical womanhood i see christ jesus shining through the life of a woman yeah full stop so that comes across in your mannerisms that comes across in how hospitable you are how patient how gentle how loving how kind Mm -hmm. and all of those other things that the bible speaks about all of those speak to biblical womanhood Mm. the bible speaks a lot about you know stuff about women, um, what their roles are and what they should be doing and where they should be. Um, In regards to the world, women are slaying literally in everything they're doing in the world of business, um, just, you know, music, work, church. We're actually amazing. There are some ministers in the forefront, um, but within the church, there aren't many. um, And, you know, sometimes we're asked to take a step back. Do you think that the church's view on women's place in the world is a bit behind? Do you think we're a few steps behind everyone else at the moment? In church? That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Women in the church. I feel like this is probably one of the most widely debated topics of life. Mm -hmm. Um, Personally, I feel like women and the ministry of women, God has done... He's kind of imparted so much within his like his daughters. And I'm always reminded of Aquila and Priscilla in the Bible. And they were mm. a husband and wife that teached and trained Paul and Apollos. Yeah. And in certain church environments, we completely shun the role of a woman even being able to minister, mm-hmm. even being able to share what's on her heart. And I think that that's wrong. Yeah. Um, and I do believe that there's, there is a role within the church. The Bible talks about older women teaching younger women. There's mm-hmm. a role where women are able to kind of bring out what's on the inside of them and share it with people. Mm-hmm. There's a way in which a woman will deliver something that a man won't. Just can't do, do you know it. what I mean? Not even won't, but can't. <laughs> <laughs> there's certain experiences that a woman might share Mm -hmm. um, to even buttress what the word of God is talking about that a man might not be able to do it in the same way and I say all of this humbly not to negate the role of a man or not Mm -hmm. to negate the authority that God has given men within Mm -hmm. the church but there is also a place for women and I'm thankful to see more and more women that are taking up that place as ministers and are taking up that place as people that can actually influence people um, and not feeling that their only job is to rare kids yeah or, you know, do refreshments after church. Or do refreshments after, after church, church. Sunday school Wait, ministries. Sure that and that's good as well. Um, yeah, so we, we did talk about modesty before. Um, another part of it that I do want to touch on is, for some strange reason, people believe that modesty only applies to women. Yeah, um, so me guys obviously need to be modest as well, for our sake. Um, in the same way that, you know, for their sake, we'll... For, yeah, for their sake, we try to be modest as well. Because some Sunday mornings are very difficult. So a guy wants to come to church in a very tight shirt and it's just holding on to everything. You know, on the offset of a, maybe a young lady that will come to church in, I don't know, like a short skirt. And as she's walking to her seat, her skirt might be rising. Now, it's very likely that at the end of the service, someone will go over and speak to the girl about what she was wearing. But they'll leave the guy to go home and in his tight shirt. Why, why do you think that is? I think a lot of it is cultural. Mm-hmm. We've been taught over the years that men are just visual creatures yeah. and they forget that God gave all of us five senses. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, we all have five senses. Yeah. So it's not just men that are visual creatures, women are as well. Mm-hmm. Men might be hypervisual, I don't know, I'm not a man. That is, that is <laughs> but women word. are also visual. So yeah, there is yeah. an extreme emphasis that's placed on the modesty of a woman, mm-hmm. which I don't think is completely right, um, mm-hmm. as opposed to how guys dress, because you're right. Yeah. Some guys, like, come on now. <laughs> you know that you should be wearing a medium why is your t-shirt you extra t-shirt small why is it extra small you know and it should it shouldn't be so and yeah. in terms of whose job is it whose duty is it it's mm-hmm. everyone's yeah. if you call yourself a christian it's my duty not just to watch the way i dress and how i interact with um people of the opposite sex but it's also my duty to guard my eyes and what i'm allowing to fester yeah you know sometimes you're right we do place the emphasis on the modesty of a woman and you know mm-hmm. oh you're gonna make all the guys sin and mm-hmm. there should also be an um whilst that you know place a, place an emphasis on women and women being modest there should also be a uh, a parallel one that says okay guys mm-hmm. job speaks about i made a covenant with my eyes not to look upon a woman with lust mm-hmm. how many guys can make that covenant yeah. do you know what i mean mm-hmm. everything not everything that comes to your eyes should be something that you now say okay i'm gonna allow this to you know fester, fester. i'm gonna continue it, i mean yeah. 
glance look away <laughs> like do you know okay. what i mean so yeah. it goes hand in hand you know as the women are doing their job the guys should also be, be doing this. their job and you know whether or not you say women shouldn't dress a certain way within the church okay people don't do that in the church but a guy's still going to leave the church go to work and you're going to see women dressed in, in way. crazy ways yeah. and as a man it's your also your job to make sure you're guarding your eyes and guarding what you allow into your heart mm -hmm. so it goes hand in hand and we shouldn't negate one for the other yeah so you did mention culture so yeah what was it like growing up at home and you know in regards to people's thoughts about where you are now did you ever face any opposition, um, any, any pressure from family members to become or be what they believed success to be? I think I've had, I've had, I have had, had pressure. It's not too much because I do think I'm quite independent minded. Mm -hmm. So just even family wise, I think people are like, okay, if, if he's doing something, we trust her wisdom, okay. which I praise God for. Yeah. <laughs> but I have had, you know, I'm not in your contemporary line of work. Mm -hmm. At one point, my family wanted me to be a doctor. My grandma was like, oh, finally, I'm going to have a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was that yeah. deep. And, to kind of see how my path went through university to not doing that. I still, yeah. I still get the questions like, mm. oh, you know, you need to be doing so, so, and so. But I'm very adamant right now where it's like, I hear what you're saying, auntie. I hear what you're saying, uncle, yeah. mum, dad. <laughs> but this is what the Lord has said. And I don't do that in a way that disrespects their authority or mm. do that in a way that completely shuns them out. But when you know what God has called you to do, yeah. it's your job to communicate that to your parents and mm -hmm. walk in it. Yeah, that's good. So intimate um, is the evening sessions that you've been holding, which are like workshops where you sit down and talk about stuff that Christians either can't talk about or won't talk about. Um, why do you think that it's important to finally, you know, flesh out these things and actually sit down and have proper discussions about them? I think it's important because so many people are bound in secret sin mm. and they feel like no one else is struggling, no one else is suffering from, you know, lust, no one else is watching pornography, no one else is doing any of those kind of things. And they've been seen as such taboos, even yeah. stuff like people suffering from mental health issues, depression, um, some people that are just have a lot of loneliness and feel like they're alone. They feel like no one else is struggling the way I'm struggling. Yeah. So for me, intimate is very, very important because it allows people to see oh wait I'm not the only person and there is actual help I think for the longest time the body of Christ has been silent on a lot of these issues mm -hmm. maybe because they don't know how to tackle them but definitely because it's it's just been seen as a taboo and I really want to shine the spotlight on these things and let you know that there's freedom in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. Christ didn't just die for your salvation he died for your wholeness yeah. he died for your complete redemption mm -hmm. he died so you cannot be bound to any kind of sin so mm -hmm. So five years of love limitless. Yes. What does the next five years look like for you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> One of the things that I'm really excited about is just establishing our mentoring academy mm. uh, where we can actually take girls away um, during the summer or whatever and just really pump them with discipleship, yeah. pump them with the word, set them in a community of other women that are like them and just oh. kind of see how they flourish. Um, continue with our conferences mm -hmm. and just really making God's name known. One yeah. of the things I'm passionate about is not just training people but training them to train people, mm -hmm. discipling them so that they can go on and disciple other mm -hmm. people. So just really seeing how people that have come in and um, how they go through the process and come out the other end and can help other people. So there's so many amazing things to look forward to. A shining light shining brightly for all to see. Many thanks to my first guest Ifi Alexis Sosai. And if you want to find out more information about Love Limitless, why not visit their website, lovelimitless.com. And don't forget to check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash nancymeets, for more exclusive clips of my interview with Ify. Next week, I'll be speaking to Mr. Vocals and Versus himself. Benjamin Bennett will be talking to me about growing up as a minister's son, the beauty of spoken word, and why he left his job to pursue his passion. All that up ahead next week, but for now, from all of us on the team, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Nancy Meets. Goodbye.